Welcome back to Get Google Ready in 2024. And in this lesson, I'm gonna be taking you through the step-by-step -step process in how to correctly set up your Google search campaigns right now. And this is gonna be building upon the previous lessons. We've already done our keyword research and we've got that ready to go in a spreadsheet and we've also already got our ad copy. And what we need to do from here is we're gonna be putting that together and building out our first Google search campaign. Now we are gonna jump into a step-by-step -step screen share because I find that's the best way that you can learn. But what I do wanna let you know is that if you do miss any of these steps, please don't be worried because if you download the link in the description below, you can get my Google search campaign setup guide. And this includes screenshots of all of the individual steps that I'm gonna be taking you through. And what the search campaign guide also does have is it does also give you some extra information about how to structure your Google search campaign. So that's gonna be some great extra teaching that you can get in my download guide. But without wasting any more time, let's get straight into the teaching so I can take you through the step-by-step -step process of how to set up your Google search campaign. Let's go. All right, so we're gonna be starting inside of Google Ads and I've already got my keyword research ready to go and we've got it broken out into our different campaigns and I've also got my ad copy ready to go. So what we need to do is I'm gonna be setting up this campaign for the one bedroom villas. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is we go through and press this new create campaign or you can even go up to here and press create and we're gonna go campaign. Now for a service-based business because we're looking at generating more leads, so email inquiries would go for leads. If you are e-commerce, commerce and you're wanting to generate sales, you would use sales. Now, if this is a branded campaign or a competitor campaign, I would go through and generally use like a website traffic because we're just looking at generating some extra traffic. And they're the main ones that we'd wanna be using for a search campaign, but we're gonna use leads for this. Now, I've already got some conversion actions already set up. If you don't have any conversion actions set up, you don't need to be alarmed because you can add in your conversions at a later date. So we wanna go through and click continue. The only thing I will add there is if you want to, if you wanted to delete one of these, you can do that by removing the submit lead forms, but you don't need to be alarmed because that just removes it from the campaign. It doesn't remove it from the account. We go through and click continue and we want to be selecting a search campaign. Now, when it comes to your campaign name, Google will just give like a lead search number two. But I recommend is that you actually add in a name, what I call like a using a good naming convention. And what you wanna do here is that you wanna have a name that makes sense to you. So this one, we're gonna be setting up a one bedroom villas campaign. We're also gonna be setting up another campaign, which is gonna be about our two bedroom villas. And the benefit of that is, is that so that when you're in your Google Ads dashboard, if you just see campaign one, campaign two, campaign three, you don't really know what they're about. So that's why it's highly, highly recommended to add in a campaign name. That makes sense to you. No one externally is gonna be seeing this, but you just want a clear name that makes it easy for when you're optimizing your campaign. So then we go through and click continue. Now, when it comes to bidding, because this is gonna be inside a new account and a new campaign, we're gonna start on clicks. And eventually we do wanna to move to maximize conversions, but you, may remember that within this playlist, we spoke about bidding in that first lesson. And I gave the guideline that before you went over to a maximize conversions or a maximize conversions value bidding strategy, you wanna be getting those 30 conversions in 30 days. So it's too early to get to that stage. Let's start on clicks. And then from there, we wanna go through and click next. Now, you'll have two options for including your search partners and being included in the Google Display Network. If you're based in the US, I do keep this selected. And the reason for that is they're probably one of the only markets that have some good market share with other search partners like AOL. Everywhere else, I just haven't seen the benefit of including it. Display Network, I do use the selection to not include my search ads in the Display Network. And the reason for that is, is because if we're gonna do display ads, it's better to have the investment in putting in the extra time to set up a specific display campaign with images. Whereas if you're just using your search campaign, you're using search text ads and you're just not gonna be getting the same results. So if you wanna be doing ads on the display network, which is the image-based uh, ads for Google, you're better off setting up a separate display campaign, which we will be covering in this series. Now, when it comes to locations to target, for this one, this is targeting our villa resort in Indonesia, but we're gonna be adding it in three or four of our top performing countries, which I know have have really similar metrics and really similar search terms. So that's gonna be Australia, Singapore, we're also gonna do Saudi Arabia. 
Now, I will may go back and add in another one or two, but they're our main three markets. And what we wanna do through here is when it comes to location options, there's two different options here. You've got presence or interest, and this is, as Google explains, people in regularly or who show an interest in your targeted locations. Now, the reason for why I'm gonna choose presence only, so it's people in your regular targeted locations, because remember for this campaign, we're wanting to target people in Australia, Saudi Arabia and Singapore for product which is in Indonesia. So if we had it on interest, we would also be targeting people who are outside of those countries who have shown interest in Australia. So you can see where it doesn't really work in this situation, but that's the two different options that you have. And when it comes to languages, see how you've got this little option to add in Arabic. When it comes to Google Ads campaigns, you do need to remember that Google does not translate the ad copy. So if we were gonna set up an Arabic campaign, that would be in a separate campaign. I've always found it's better to have individual languages inside of one campaign. Now, when it comes to audience segments, I am very, very strong in including your audience segments. Now, I'd recommend to start with about 20 to 30 audiences. And the way that you can do this is because obviously this is for Bali, you can type in the search, and then I'll also include some Indonesia. And then because this is a villa, you could type in villa resorts. And this is just the process of you just do some search, see what Google is picking up. Uh, so we're gonna go holiday rentals. And then the other thing that you can do is you can go into your detailed demographics. And this is a great way of seeing what type of users respond to your ads. Because the one thing I do wanna recommend is that this is observation only. So this isn't the only audiences that it's going to. This is just Google giving us the information. And some people get confused about that is I see quite often people set up a search campaign and they only have one audience because they think that's the only audience that it's going to. That's not the case unless you're doing targeted method, which I wouldn't recommend as a starting campaign. I would only use targeting for a search campaign if you had some very strong industry regulations. So for example, if you weren't able to market to certain groups of people, so by age or by whether they had kids. So this one, we're just getting the information. Okay, now when it comes to the broad match option, we're gonna be adding in our keywords later so you can leave that. Then when it goes to more ad settings, people do ask about the ad rotation, about preferred best performing ads. I keep this there. I don't manually set this. The reason for that is because I run two ads at a time and do my own split testing. But I do wanna give Google control that if they do see an early trend that they will favor one ad because if it's getting a better click-through ratio and conversion rate, I want that ad to be shown. Now, start and end dates. You can add a start date. Don't add an end date because if you're only gonna be using your campaign for two or three weeks, a search campaign is not for you. For me, search campaigns are very much your always on campaigns where they're, we're gonna be running these week in, week out, month in, month out, and slowly building on the performance. All right, so then we go through to next. Now it comes to the part where we're gonna be adding in our keywords and our ads. So we go back to our spreadsheet, and obviously our ad group is gonna be called the one bedroom villa. Once again, using something that makes sense to us, because if you've got multiple ad groups within your campaign, that way you know the differences that you've got in there. And then what we're gonna do through here is I'm gonna copy my initial keywords and we're gonna paste them in here. Now in this teaching series, I've taken you through how to do the keyword research. So these are just gonna be my starting keywords. Now I'm gonna be adding to these keywords and I'll show you exactly how I do that when we get to the part of optimizing our campaign. But as a rule, I start with about three or four longer tail broad match keywords. So you can see here, because remember, Google is not now targeting the words, it's targeting the intent or the meaning of these keywords. But then what we're gonna be doing is over time in this campaign, we're gonna be building out an extended list of exact match keywords to target. And then from there, we need to go through and add in our ads. Now, the one thing that I would say with our landing page, because this is a one bedroom villa that we're targeting, we don't wanna take it through to our homepage. We wanna take it through to the more relevant landing page, which is this landing page which is all about our one bedroom villas. So we put the URL in there. And then from there, it's just a matter of building out our ads. It's important to note that with this display path, which you can see in here, one bedroom Seminyak villas, that doesn't have to be your actual URL. We just use that for increased keyword focus. And then it's just a matter of going through and adding in your headlines. And because I've already got this all set up, I just need to go through and paste these in. If you give me some time, I'll just go through and copy some of these over. Now, once you've added in your headlines and your descriptions, it gives you the options to add in some different ad extensions. So I would highly recommend that you go through and add in some site links and some call outs. So just to explain what the site links are, these are different navigation things that you can add at the bottom of the ad. So for example, for this one, what we would do is that we would add some site links around our two bedroom villas. We would also add site links about booking now, also our image gallery. And what you're doing is that you're going through and say, for example, in here, you create a new one. 
And what you're doing in here is you can see that we've now got some sight links in there. So I would need to add in two before they show, but that's the process that you go through to add in the sight links. And then call outs. Call outs are gonna be a little call out text which appear after this headline. So you can go through and add them in there. Now, by going through and adding all of these ad assets, what it does do is it helps to improve your ad rank. So it is something that I definitely recommend. But as you can see, it's quite an easy process of setting that up. And then when you go through, click done. And then we go through and click next. Now what it comes to here is that Google will give you a recommended budget which would be is usually over the top. What you want to be focusing on here if you look at your keyword research you can see from here my top of the page bid is ranging around about four dollars. So generally what I would do is I would go ten times that amount because we want to be getting at least ten clicks a day. So we're comfortable with a budget of starting at forty dollars a day. So don't feel like you've got to do this recommendation. Ideally what you want to be getting is you want to set your budget so that you know you're going to be getting at least 10 clicks a day. Obviously more clicks is better, but obviously if you're a small business, you wanna be starting as low as possible so you can get enough data and then increasing the budget as you get more results. Then we go through and click on next. And then from there, all you need to do is to go through and click on publish your campaign. So congratulations, you set up your Google search campaign. Now, one thing that I do wanna stress, especially if this is a new Google Ads account, it can take up to three days before your ads start showing. So don't be alarmed if that once you press publish, if you're not seeing your ads straight away. Now, if you did miss any of those steps, remember all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below so you can download my Google search campaign setup guide. And plus remember that this teaching video is part of my Get Google Ready series for 2024. And if you wanna be notified and know exactly when I release a new video, I want you to not only subscribe, but it'd also be great if you could press that notification bell and then you get notified as soon as I release a video. Once again, thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron Young and I'm from Define Digital Academy and I look forward to seeing you next time. See ya.